eligible candidate for uh, provincial by-elections in Markham and uh, representative of the media. Uh, considering the phenomenal growth in immigration population in York region, the settlement agencies are facing tremendous challenges due to the number of clients and range of services required. We had some discussion with Minister during Bill 124 and afterwards about <coughs> going through some of the issues of your region. So I'm thankful that Mr. Paul uh, gave us the opportunity to, to have a round table to go over some of the issues and meet with the agencies in the region. Um, so what we will do is I we have given some of the information out. Um, if you see the agenda, I would like to just follow that. We have Mr. Cole and uh, Michael Chen, and then I would like to uh, briefly go through each uh, agency. You can introduce yourself and the agency that you represent, and if you want to give just a short 30 second introduction, because we're going to be question answers about some of the issues later. So, I'm Noel Jane. Mr. Cole will come later. Or So my name is Noel Dane. I'm the Executive Director of Human Endeavor. It's an organization that was established two years ago by some volunteers in, uh, in the city of Vaughan. And we are serving seniors and newcomers. And we, we have local as well as international focus for, for some of our services. Oh, hi, my name is Danny Mayer. I'm, I'm the Executive Director of CICS, the Center for Information and Community Services. CICS is a multi-services agency, but with the focus and mandate of serving uh, the new immigrants community to help them to settle and integrate into the community. So we covered uh, the need to service data of the bridge Toronto areas. So we do have services sites in uh, Scarborough and downtown Toronto, and we have two separate sites, service sites in Markham and one satellite site in um, Richmond Hill. So um, York Region definitely has faced a lot of challenges and York Region has been chosen as uh, the destination of uh, huge numbers of new immigrants nowadays. So I think uh, for CICS it is it's an opportunity, it is also a challenge that we really want to work together with the government and work with all the other partnering agencies to accommodate the needs of the new immigrants here or will be moving into York Region. Thank you very much. Here we go. And our mandate is to facilitate labor market development in your region in South Simcoe. And the integration issue is very close. And the organization deals with currently accreditation issues as well as language translation and, and services to your immigrants. Okay. Uh, I'm Stephen App, I'm the Director of the Immigrant Services Economy Program. I represent Catholic Christian of Region. Uh, we are the, the first provider, major provider for immigrant settlement service in your region. We have five past locations. Uh, well, Mark Harmon, Richmond, and Guam. We also work with the school, school boards, covering all schools. My name is Faye Jawahir, and I'm from Iranian Association of Ontario. And uh, we work with the newcomer and uh, for the settlement, and as well as the seniors. I'm Frankie Wei. I'm the president of the Toronto Chinese Community Service Association, which we are going to change our name to the Cross Cultural Community Service Association. Well, uh, we've been around for over 33 years, just a, little, a few years less than CICS. Basically, we are doing almost the same kind of things, which uh, with uh, newcomers, settlements, and services looking into their their needs in, in everyday life right now because some of the new immigrants have been here for a few years and uh, there are more problems coming up. And we are always looking in ways to try to help them to get employment, which in a way is just helping everybody in the world on the tax so that uh, we, we spend less on, on, on the social service that we can help them to settle with. Uh, we, we've been around in, uh, in Toronto area, in, uh, the York region, Peel region, and right now we're in Brampton too. We're looking into hiring somebody in Brampton. We see that uh, new immigrants are everywhere, but especially uh, they come into uh, York region for a couple of reasons. Uh, most likely it's much friendlier here because 
they find it more easy to find a job, maybe. I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a developing uh, region that we can see. Though. And we definitely see the need of it that we have to expand to our service into this area for more than what we have been doing. So uh, that's why we are here, sitting sitting here, to try to give our opinion on that. This is Simon Chen. Uh, I'm from York Region, uh, the Planning Department. I'm the Director of Human Services Planning. My responsibility includes providing staff support to the Human Services Planning Coalition, which is a collaborative human services planning body in York Region. And one of our current major activity is the Inclusivity Action Plan. And, um, and for this reason, I wanted to share uh, the Human Services Planning Coalition's thoughts on how we can better serve our diverse uh, ethnocultural communities in York Region. Hi, my name is Maria. Maria San. I'm the president of Chinese IT Professionals Association. It's a non-profit organization. And uh, in the uh, past seven years, each Saturday we held free seminars for the newcomers, especially for the newcomers from mainland China. We focus on how to write in resumes, how to pass the interview, how to find different area uh, professional jobs, such as government, such as in the bank. And uh, more than 30,000 newcomers from mainland China joined our free seminars already. And that it really works. A lot of people through it get a job in the end. So that's the reason I sit here. And I want to share some experience with everybody. Thank you so much. Um, I'm Mary O'Hala. I'm Executive Director of Costi Immigrant Services. And uh, it's my paid job. My volunteer work is as president of the Toronto Social Planning Council. Uh, COSTI operates immigrant service uh, centers throughout uh, Toronto, York Region, and Peel. Our work here in Peel uh, includes uh, two centers for language training, one in Markham and one in Richmond Hill, and three centers for employment, all, all really dedicated uh, to the immigrant community, uh, trying to help them integrate and become part of our society. Just briefly, introduce just briefly, I will go in more detail about you. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah, just well, my name is Michael Chen, I'm the Liberal candidate for the by election in Marco. Uh, my own job actually, or previous one, is uh, I'm an industry broker, job alliance, I have uh, my an office right in Marco. I have branches in Richmond Hill and Brampton and that's so all. Four branches and one head office in Marco. So before we go into it, the purpose of today's meeting again was to, to have the service agencies and even some of the government agencies on the table to, to better understand the uh, difficulties uh, that newcomers and talent agencies face in the young region. <coughs> uh, I have done a, a prepared a brief presentation, which everybody has a copy of it. And uh, the presentation is based on uh, the community snapshot that the region produced uh, a couple of months ago, so six months ago, yeah. as, as a detail. I, I think I will encourage everybody to take a look at the detail. It's available on the internet. There are not no hard copies available today, so Simon Chang just brought an executive summary which we have distributed. Um, so that is the basis of uh, my question. I'll briefly go through and then this will set the stage for some of the further discussion. And uh, this, this particular presentation just takes out some of the key findings of that report, not the detailed one. Um, So the, the topic that, again, based on uh, our discussion with Mr. Cole in the past about uh, the Bill 124 and what should be the next step, so I think at least from our region's point of view, now serving the, the York region is one of our, our organization's objective, and I believe that's uh, everybody present here. Uh, so just to give a brief idea about York region, it's uh, 1,776 square kilometers, which is double the size of Toronto in, in terms of its area. Look at the population growth, which was only 257,081. In 2006, it has gone more than three times, three and 3.6 times to 933,000. And by 2031, it will be 1.5 million. 
So that's an exponential growth. And uh, all the statistics show that most of the income, uh, the, the population that's coming in is, is immigrants. And that's one of the statistics that's even down that immigrants are, the immigrant growth is 132% versus the non-immigrant. So this is, an, this is a region that's attracting most of the newcomers in, in this area. The diversity of this percentage-wise 40% today, which I believe, if Simon can correct me, is uh, second to Toronto or something, based on statistics. I, I mean, Toronto is normally always uh, the number one, and then probably the young region. Uh, the average in Ontario is only 26.8%, so we are quite diverse. Some of the key recent immigrants and their key challenges, based on uh, uh, some of the findings, the demographic wise, two thirds of the recent immigrants, immigrants are working age in the position to contribute to the economy, that is 25 to 50 years, which we consider the prime working age. Education wise, uh, immigrants have higher level of education than non immigrants. Income wise, employment income for recent immigrants is about two thirds of the employment income of non immigrants. Even though they are highly educated, their income is only two thirds. Poverty levels, the opinion of recent immigrants population is almost three times as likely as non-immigrants to be within the low income cutoff. So, uh, on the language side, York region has the highest percentage over 10,000 or 11 percent of the recent immigrants that have no knowledge of either official language in relation to other GTA municipalities. That kind of shows uh, the burden on the language uh, side and some of the agencies. Housing costs are comparatively higher in York Region amongst the five GTA municipalities. Recent immigrants due to poor income levels, which we have shown previously, are most likely to spend a greater portion, which is 50%. I think 50% was some cutoff, uh, if, if I remember correctly, that based on the two-thirds of the income of the regular, it's, it's much bigger portion of the income that goes towards uh, all types of housing, either rental or, or mortgages. Some of the other key areas that difficulties that immigrants face are in the transportation area and uh, some of the senior services. This was an interesting slide that I got out of uh, the detailed report that, that shows the York region funding level and for, for that. And it, it shows that York region is First, that even though immigrants are increasing, diversity is increasing, population is increasing, the funding for York region is on the downside. So this is, this, and this is also one of the lowest in all other GTM municipalities. So I think this is something this tells you the story uh, with all the population increase versus all the decrease in uh, uh, the funding levels. So some of the suggestions that have taken from the from the report, I will just go through them because I think that is something we would like to then uh, uh, discuss among some of the issues <coughs> that uh, either immigrants are facing or the agencies serving immigrants they are facing. So, some of the uh, suggestions that are in that featured report is York region's immigrants, although highly educated and skilled, are economically vulnerable <coughs> during the first few, several years after their arrival. It is important that funding from provincial and federal governments reflect this reality and that the region at the community and government level advocate for a fair share of funding, especially in light of the new federal and provincial funding that will become available. It is also important that services in York region reflect the needs of changing population. York Region's organizations are willing and eager to understand how our communities are changing and to make necessary changes. In fact, there has been a number of initiatives directed towards responding to the changing demographics. A lack of comprehensive information has, however, been a significant impediment to focus services for service delivery and planning as well as advocacy for funding. Third suggestion was the increased pace of immigration and the fact that many immigrants come straight to York region rather than first settling in transitional areas, for example, Toronto <coughs> or Belgium, with well-developed settlement support has changed the success level of recent immigrants and points to the need of support system if the region is going to continue to benefit from the economic and social contributions. This is a, 
the fact that some of the immigrants don't do as well in York region compared to GTA because of lack of services, just pointing to that. Now, it is my hope that this profile will provide the type of general information that will help set the stage for today's discussion, better advocacy for funding, and more focused and balanced service delivery and planning. I'd just like to acknowledge that uh, most of the information that I extracted is from your region and a lot of the organizations that are on the table were involved in that research. So, so I think that's why I picked that particular report as the basis of our today's discussion and our future plan. <coughs> I would like to introduce now Minister Cole. The Honourable, the Honourable Mike Cole, Ontario Minister of Citizenship and Immigration. Honourable Mike Cole was first elected as a member of provincial parliament for Ontario in 1995, after serving as Toronto Municipal Councillor for a number of times and as chair of the Toronto Transit Commission. In 2005, Premier McGuinty appointed Mr. Cole as Minister of Citizenship and Immigration. Mr. Cole leads the first, led the, led the first. Standalone Ministry of Citizenship and Immigration in Ontario. As Minister, he signed the first part of the Canada Ontario Immigration Agreement, securing 920 million over the five years in funding from Ottawa. He is also responsible for passing unprecedented legislation, Bill 124, which all of us have contributed to as well, uh, the Fair Access to Regulated Professions Act, 2006. In the opening of Global Experience Ontario, the first ever one-stop access and resource centre to help internationally trained professionals break down barriers to licensing and accreditation in Ontario. Thank you, Mr. Cohn. Uh, thank you, uh, Noor, for the introduction. Um, as uh, some of you know, uh, we've had a, a number of very informative meetings here before, and some of you have attended. I know we had the wonderful meeting at Markham City Hall. Uh, we had a very good presentation on the uh, challenges and the opportunities in uh, Markham and York Region. At that time, we had uh, some excellent uh, insights given uh, from the Markham Board of Trade. We had the, uh, uh, the um, United Way of uh, Raul, uh, who's now gone from, uh, it was sort of sad to see him gone, actually. I hope he continues to, to help us. And we've also had meetings in the city of Bonn about these same issues, and then some of the meetings related to uh, uh, getting Bill 124 passed. Uh, as you know, uh, uh, that initiative uh, is the only one of its kind, and there was a lot of opposition at the beginning. Uh, <coughs> nobody wanted this change because everybody's talked about giving trained professionals a chance. They talk for, you know, many have been around for a long time, you know, for 30 years there's been talk about doing something. But I think because of the input uh, that many of you had in that early process, by having those public meetings, uh, by demonstrating the need to make this change, I think a lot of the opposition sort of faded. And we were able to pass that bill and pass it quickly, because sometimes legislation takes a couple of years, but we were able to pass it because we came together to articulate a very simple message. <clears throat> we need to make a change. The status quo is not acceptable any longer. People have been waiting for a fair chance at their profession for too long. So, so there's been a lot of, I think, excellent progress because we've worked together and shared ideas and insights. Uh, and, and I do appreciate uh, that. And, and so this is one of the reasons why I have Michael here with me today, because I want him to be exposed to the critical needs that there are in human development and human resourcing in York Region as the potential next MPP for this area. He has to be up to speed and understand how important this is, and that's why I've asked him to come along and say, this is, these are the people you've got to listen to to get a better, deeper appreciation of uh, how you can really help make Markham and make uh, York Region a better place because it's not just the highways and it's just not you know, the new hospital which is great and the schools, but it's the human resources that have to be invested in 
that's the critical area that uh, needs attention. So that's why I'm glad that M Michael is here for that, so you can hear this. Uh, and um, as Miller said, uh, you know, in this presentation, you know, from day one, it's quite obvious what's happening. Uh, for many years, people always talked about, well, Toronto's where all the immigrants are. But if you look at the data in recent years, there's a very interesting phenomenon. Toronto, the city of Toronto is no longer the first choice for immigrants. And there's a multitude of factors for that. I think one of them is just the high cost of real estate. You, know, you try to uh, rent an apartment or buy a house anywhere within the city of Toronto, uh, it is critically impossible. But on the other hand, if you go to Peel, York Region, it's possible to buy a reasonable price home to get started. Sometimes a couple of families get together, extended family. So, plus, as Noor said, there are job opportunities here. A lot of the uh, employment uh, activities are happening here, whereas in Toronto, it seems to be fragmented into financial services for the most part, the only growth we've really seen. So that is a very good thing. I think it's a very great opportunity, but this increase in uh, direct migration into uh, York Region and Peel Region is also a challenge to provide the social infrastructure services, which you all provide your own near about. So that is why it's been one of my uh, roles as minister to bring attention to this. That as much as we have to underpin the uh, infrastructure growth of uh, these regions, we also have to underpin the human infrastructure growth with meaningful investments. And so is it no better than to compare the unfairness that if an immigrant went to Montreal, uh, they would uh, get approximately $3,800 in federal program investment, language, counseling, 3800 This has been going on since 1992, $3,800 approximately, because Quebec signed an agreement with uh, the federal government. Whereas in Ontario and cities like York Region, or a region like York Region, the, the investment has been one quarter of that, if not less. So the immigration has been increasing, the number of needs are still there, yet the uh, the amount of investment in uh, settlement, language training, uh, even EI, retraining, etc., has been basically flat, if not declining, because there hasn't been any real increase, as you've all seen, uh, Frank here, Dan, you've seen it. It's been basically flatlined for 20 years almost. Some incremental growth, one off programs. And now we have an incredible opportunity because we Finally, and uh, just in the last days of the Martin government, we got that agreement. Uh, just as they were going out the door. We got them to sign the paper. Uh, it was November, two weeks later. The, and that is a meaningful change because it means there's finally a recognition that the present funding uh, was totally unfair. In fact, it was economically and socially stupid to do it that way because you're, you're basically uh, creating a uh, you know, sort of recipe for disaster when you, you don't fund human services probably. So the money was allocated, the next government has, it's one of the agreements they've agreed to uphold, thankfully, because there's a couple of other, like the labor market partnership agreement, which was also critical, isn't there by the way, and that's another agreement that we should still be fighting for, because that means retraining dollars, meaningful retraining dollars. But anyways, we did get that 920 million over five years. The good news is that after, it was very slow and many of you who heard me over the last year keep on asking, you know, the money must flow. It's been slow as molasses. And it is finally starting to come to the agencies. And I think for most of you verify the, the dollars are coming in meaningful amounts. People are being hired. Uh, programs are being expanded, like settled workers in schools, uh, the ISAP program, the employment workshop programs. Uh, those are finally starting to happen uh, and right across uh, Ontario. but especially in uh, the regions of York and Peel, because as a result of the agreement, we sit at the table with the federal government to shape policy, and I think some of you have been involved with the input on it too. So we've said, uh, emphatically as the government of Ontario, we said, one of our priorities is to deal with fast growth areas. So any new programs or any new expansion, any new uh, resource delivery has to be targeted especially to Peel and York Region. 
because that is where the dramatic growth is. Because as many times as I tell people that Toronto's growth since 2003 has only been 4% almost in uh, immigrant uh, settlement. The growth in the regions is about 34% increase. So where you have Toronto's is basically stagnant, the city. But York and Peel region are growing at a very significant rate. Now Toronto still has the vast majority of them, but that trend is going to continue, we think. So that is why we are designating York and Peel region as priority areas for our settlement and investment. Okay? They are priority areas. So whenever any allocation of funds comes, settlement, language training, ESL, uh, bridge training projects, th those are two designated regions of Ontario for priority funding. Because Peel, it's almost, a, we've had the same meetings in Peel, it's almost a similar di dynamics there. So that is, a, that is a significant policy that we put in place. And that is why, again, we are doing, in every policy announcement, in every kind of funding announcement, we will try to do our best to direct these investments in the high growth areas. And, and also, not only direct the investments, but in shaping the programs. Because I know many of you come to me with excellent ideas and innovative programs of not only doing program delivery the way we've done it, but also to come up and develop new ways of delivering some of these programs. Because, frankly, the old static approach uh, is not going to cut it when you've got highly skilled people trying to get jobs as accountants or trying to get jobs in biotech. The perfect example Frankie Way gives all the time. We need, for instance, in language training programs, uh, bridge training programs, to do occupation-specific business English so they can learn the job of the workplace and that's a very high level set of English and you know so and we've had excellent proposals come forward about some unique ways plus as you know the one thing we did is I was not happy with what I saw was happening with ESL frankly it was buried in the Ministry of Education it was no nobody even knew it it was 53 million dollars there so one of the things, when I was made minister, I said, I want adult ESL, which basically goes through newcomers, I want to take it out of education, and it's now in my ministry. So we have a new curriculum there being developed, more accountability, uh, we have new component parts, which I think are critical in meeting the needs that you see your clients have, so we can shape the newcomers to fit the jobs and the social conditions of the future. So that is already underway, in the, we work with uh, Tesla Ontario, and we've also worked with uh, KESBA, the uh, school board organizer, to develop this new curriculum. Because it's not good enough just to learn English, to learn, know how to use banking services, or learn basic English so you can shop. Many of our uh, foreign trained, or all of our newcomers, need communication English, business English, because many jobs are basically marketing, communication. So that's why there's been a total revamping of ESL, and, uh, and it's an ongoing. So I would like to get your continued input on how we can shape some of these programs. There are other programs. I know we, last week we had another visit about maybe shaping another program about uh, outreach into unconventional areas. Rather than having the clients come to your centers, we also like the idea of maybe having these outreach programs going into the temples and mosques where people meet on uh, Saturday, Sundays because of the geographic distances in the York and Peel region. So we like those kinds of ideas to come forward to be innovative because sometimes, you know, people cannot travel that far and they're not going to come that far. So, if we, so we're, we're trying to explore all kinds of programs uh, that are innovative, creative, and meet the, the reality of the ground. In other words, we don't believe in one size fits all, because what may be good in, uh, you know, in, in the far reaches of uh, 
whether it be Unionville or whether it's in downtown Vaughan in Vaughan or, or, or something uh, that uh, may exist in Brampton can be totally different what's needed in Mississauga. So there's diverse interest and diverse niches that we're very attentive to. We don't want to have a uniformity of programs, uh, but we do want to have, again, new ideas. We want to have accountability. And uh, we also want to somehow do better coordination. Because we are in a growth spurt. And resources are going to be available. We just want to make sure that as we deliver these services better with more resources, we deliver them properly, effectively, efficiently. So that is, that is really what I'm looking for, is accountability, creativity, and expansion of services to meet the needs of our newcomers. And the last thing I'll say before I open the questions and comments is that, as you know, I'm very emphatic about the fact there's an imperative for us to continue to have immigration. So as much as it is a challenge, we all know that, uh, that it's work, it's investment, it's uh, resources, it's a challenge, and you know better than I do. But I do feel that we cannot dissuade people from coming here. I think, first of all, humanitarian, humanitarian grounds, people are always going to come and choose Canada, which we've all be sad. Whether it be the 20,000 people now sitting in camps uh, in Jordan trying to uh, survive, with no place to go, or, or you know, it could be anybody, plus the regular immigration. Because ultimately, right now, if you look at the data, it's quite stark. Our birth rate is declining. Not only is it flat, it's declining. Our interprovincial migration is also declining, even more dramatically. Remember people used to come from Newfoundland, people used to come from the Maritimes? That's not happening anymore, because they're going to Alberta, or in some cases they're staying in their home provinces, because some, some of the provinces like Saskatchewan are doing better economically than the province of Ontario in some ways because of oil. So you've got the climate and the birth rate, no interprovincial migration. The immigration that's coming in here is basically keeping our population levels increasing maybe 1% a year. If it wasn't for the immigration, um, you could see the stagnation that would occur in our economy, in our communities, uh, and without that, we will not continue to grow and prosper. Because I do feel, as a result of immigrants that come here, if you give them the opportunity to overcome the first few months or year, they will be great contributors. Because we know, for instance, it's amazing numbers, like oh, within the first two years, over 50% of them have some kind of home ownership. That's the, the good side of it, did you hear? The, the home ownership rate is higher than, and the education rate is even higher than uh, born and bred Canadians. So we've got people that are educated, people that have great work ethic, and plus the living testament of how it works. And I'm not preaching uh, to the choir here, but I say, you know how it works is, I said, look at Markham, look at Brampton, look at Mississauga, and see what's been happening. Building growth, economic prosperity. But underneath that is the need to ensure everybody gets the support they need. Because, as Noir will tell you over and over again, there are also, it's not just about the foreign trained professionals. Because I know there's a lot of emphasis on that, and Bill 124 was a focus on that. But I know full well that the other 80% are the children, the mothers, the grandmothers, <coughs> the parents, the people that are maybe not able to work, that also are serviced by your agencies. That's the 80%. that doesn't get sometimes the publicity or the attention that we also have to provide services for. So that's why it's not just you know, the foreign trained professionals, it's the, all of the newcomers that come here need those kind of support services. And that's the one area we also have to look at. We're very cognizant because it's not a New York region problem, it's a, it's a province wide problem. A lot of seniors are unable to really participate, they're isolated, uh, they, they feel abandoned, uh, they don't drive language barriers. So those are, that's an example of one of the new emerging areas that we have to address and we're, we're looking to resource to, to let you know that. So again, yeah, that's all I'll say, but I, I just wanted to uh, thank you all and Noor for making this uh, possible because again, I wanted him to have this follow-up as a result of uh, the number of things we've done. 
because I told him this, it's not just passing the Bill 124, we have to continue into the next two or three steps. Now that we have the momentum and good things are happening, we have to continue the momentum while the strike while the iron is hot. Uh, Minister Paul, I thank you for mentioning me, getting me here for the opportunity to listen to people here. As a matter of fact, I have been locked in the door during the campaign, listening to, listening to a lot of people, and uh, especially in the southeast corner, which is heavily populated with newer people, they were immigrants. And uh, actually, the, the issue that comes up with me is you know, how to get a job, how can they, uh, how you know, some of them are renting. So I did uh, listen to a lot of those issues that they have. Anyway, I mentioned about my company, uh, you know, with branches and all that. And actually, I had 30 staff, I had 100 agents, and I, had, I must have over 20 <coughs> different kinds of origin people that work with me, so I do have experience in dealing with people from all walks of life. But that back in 30 years ago, that wasn't that story. And I came here alone to mention our big team. You didn't mention I have no money. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't mention I have no friend. I don't have one friend. I wish I had the people here helping me at that time. And I do not have any money. So it was really out in the cold you know, in the, but I arrived here in September it's not that cold and the uh, beginning was a bit tough but you know what I, I got help yeah, people helped me I was, in Ber I was in Alberta I was in British Columbia I was in Amherst, Nova Scotia and everywhere I go people helped me and uh, finally I settled down in Markham I went a good business I consider what a successful and I think that it's time to help probably to help people. You're bringing me here because for Africa I'm the life example of an immigrant who actually in the beginning have to work hard, have to map all the challenges and walk through the, all the different obstacles. And I can tell you, but then I had help from people. I think everybody here I know some of you are volunteers, some of you may be pay staff. What you're doing here is helping those people who came like me. So I really appreciate your work here. And uh, I just want to sit here, listen to you, maybe give me more input. And with I can get after, I will formally advise and help the people who's here and help the people who's going to come here. Thank you very much.